Okay, now let's look at Sukkot or Tabernacles uh, and see if Christ fulfilled this when he came the first time. So in verses uh, 33 through 44 of chapter 23 of Leviticus. So Leviticus 23, 33 to 44. I'll read that and get an understanding here. And Jehovah spake unto Moses, saying, Speaking unto the children of Israel, saying, On the fifteenth day of this seventh month is the Feast of Tabernacles for seven days unto Jehovah. On the first day shall be a holy convocation. You shall do no servile work. Seven days you shall offer an offering made by fire unto Jehovah. On the eighth day shall be a holy convocation unto you. And you shall offer an offering made by fire unto Jehovah. It is a solemn assembly. You shall do no servile work. These are the set feasts of Jehovah, which you shall proclaim to be holy convocations to offer an offering made by fire unto Jehovah, a burnt offering and a meal offering, a sacrifice, drink offerings, each on its own day. Besides the Sabbath of Jehovah and besides the gifts and besides all your vows and besides all your free will offerings will you give unto Jehovah. How be it on the 15th day of the seventh month, when you have gathered in the fruits of the land, you shall keep the feast of Jehovah seven days. On the first day shall be a solemn rest, on the eighth day shall be a solemn rest. And you shall take on the first day the fruit of goodly trees, branches of palm trees, bows of thick trees, and willows of the brook. And you shall rejoice before the Lord your God seven days. And you shall keep it a feast unto the Lord seven days in the year. It is a statute for you throughout all your generations. You shall keep it on the seventh month. You shall dwell in booths seven days. All that are home born in Israel shall dwell in booths. That your generations may know that I made the children of Israel to dwell in booths when I brought them out of the land of Egypt. I am Jehovah your God. And Moses declared unto the children of Israel the set feasts of Jehovah. So this feast pictures Christ's work in us. We are given a new life to live in us and ahead of us. And we are spiritual beings living in this flimsy, movable tabernacles to walk around in this world while God keeps us and provides for us until he comes again in his kingdom. So let's look at some scriptures that show that the apostles recognized this kingdom when it showed up. In Matthew 17, 1 through 13, it says, And after six days, Jesus take Peter and James and John his brother and does bring them up to a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his face shone as the sun, and his garments did become white as light. And lo, appeared to them, did Moses and Elijah talking together with him. And Peter answering said, Jesus, Sir, it is good for us to be here. If thou will, we may make three booths one for thee, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. And while he was yet speaking, lo, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and lo, a voice out of the cloud saying, This is my son, the beloved, in whom I delight. Hear him. And the disciples, having heard, did fall upon their face and were exceedingly afraid. And Jesus, having come near, touched them and said, Rise, be not afraid. And having lifted up their eyes, they saw no one except Jesus only. And as they were coming down from the mountain, Jesus charged him, saying, Tell no one this vision till the Son of Man out of the dead may rise. And his disciples questioned him, saying, Why then do scribes say that Elijah comes first? And Jesus answered and said to them, Elijah does indeed come first and shall restore all things. And I say to you, Elijah did already come, and they did not know him, but they did with him whatever they would. So also the Son of Man is about to suffer by them. Okay, they recognized this as the kingdom is here. God's glory is here. Let's erect tabernacles signifying this. So God can dwell with us. In Hebrew, this is called a sukkah. Uh, tabernacles is sukkot. And in Greek, this is called skinao. And in John 1, 13 to 14, it says, And the Word became flesh, and did tabernacle among us, and we beheld his glory. Glory is of any begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. John is telling us that this was fulfilled. Jesus did come and live with us. Uh, are we in our permanent body yet? 
our permanent dwelling? No. We await our permanent dwelling and our permanent bodies, uh, but we're still living in these flimsy, corruptible tents that move around like tabernacles and booze on this earth. Okay. In Exodus 12, 37, we touched on this in a previous teaching that it says, and the children of Israel journeyed from Ramesses to Sukkot, about 600,000 on foot that were men besides children. Okay, they didn't have time to camp the day after they left Ramesses, the day after they left Egypt. They were on the run. And I believe God is showing this here that as soon as you leave Egypt, your sin, Ramesses, you arrive at Sukkot, you arrive at tabernacling with God. God can tabernacle with you and in you. So Moses means drawn out, and this is a picture of Christ. Moses was a picture of Christ. As soon as we are saved, we began anticipating our new life. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Wherein if any man is in Christ, he is a new creature. The old things are passed away. Behold, they become new. So to understand this uh, particular feast a little better and how it's described, what comes to mind when the term knitted together or weaved together? Uh, what, do you, what comes to mind when I say that? Most people would refer to the voice when we're knitted together in our mother's womb. Uh, Psalms 139.13, For thou hast possessed my reins, thou hast knitted me in my mother's womb. Okay. The King James Version has covered, and covered and knitted is the word sakak. And when we look these words up, sukkot and sukkah, come from soak, which is from kakak, which is a hut, as of entwined bows, tabernacle. You remember when we were reading in the verses in Leviticus 23 that you were to take leafy bows and branches and weave them together? That is sakak. This is pointing us to Jesus Christ having his sukkah knitted together in the mother's womb when he was knitted together in tabernacle to live in on this earth. And John 1 is referring to this when uh, he tabernacled among us. Okay, Psalms 139 is also pointing to this when he was knitted together in the mother's womb. Okay, so this is the fulfillment of Sukkot. He tabernacled with us, and I believe that this is also a picture of when he could have been born, when he tabernacled with us and among us. God himself, God in the flesh, tabernacling with his people. Now he has atoned for our sins. He has made us clean. He can now tabernacle in us as a picture uh, fulfilled in Pentecost, Shavuot. And that was the day that God came down on the mountain and 3,000 were killed. And on Pentecost, the Spirit came down and 3,000 lived. Exodus 12:37. 37, it says, And the children of Israel journeyed from Ramesses to Sukkot. You need atonement before God can dwell with you and in you. And God is showing us that as soon as you turn, from Egypt and you leave Egypt, you turn towards him, you turn from your old life of sin, now God can dwell in you because the moment you leave Egypt, you arrive at Sukkot when Christ can dwell inside your tabernacle. And he's showing us that these are tied together here in this passage, uh, Passover to Sukkot. All of the feasts and offerings will be fulfilled at the same time. Your atonement will be made the same time the Passover lamb gives you the salvation from slavery, from sin. And this is why the lamb of God can take away the sins of the world. 
which isn't a sin offering in and of itself. It uh, is a shalamin, which is a peace offering. The Yom Kippur goat is a sin offering. And he is every offering and every instrument used. He's the vessels, he's the tabernacle, he's the Ark of the Covenant, he's the altar. He's your priest, he's your offering. Everything pictures Christ. Christ is our all in all. He is our every last bit of it. And when he said it is finished, it is finished. It is fulfilled. And now we can enter that rest, which he has also fulfilled, the Sabbath day rest in the tomb.